History Month. We celebrate our history all throughout the year, but as this is set aside as Black History Month, we want to just remember our ancestors, remember the prayers and the, the devotions and everything that was done that laid the foundation for us as a people, as a culture. Um, we're standing here today colorful. Our, cult, our culture embraces being bright and having colors and not cowering down. And that's what we want to thank God for just giving us that spirit of resilience. Amen? Amen. And again, we always want to preserve and respect and honor our history, honor our legacy as we move forward. Amen? Amen. So today we just want to take a time, take a little time to just go back, just think back to some of the old songs. For they have not died. They still have value today. Amen? Amen. And we want to remember and remain just rep in reverence to that. Amen.
give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Everybody all over the building, put your hands together. Give God a hand clap of praise. For he's worthy to be praised. Grace and peace be multiplied to each of you from God our Father, his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and from the Holy Spirit, who's both our comforter and our God. Let me say to the church, good morning. What a blessing it is to be alive. What an even greater blessing it is to be saved. For the reality, again, of that conviction is we're not smiling on God. But how many of y'all know this morning God is richly smiling on us? Amen. And for that, we tell the Lord uh, thank you. Let me hasten to say thank you to each of you this week for all of your calls, emails, text messages. Again, whatever capacities of communication we've had and experienced, let me say to you thank you for taking time out of your schedules again that are busy to just share with your pastor for that i want to say to the lord thank you amen because again i believe love is not what it says but i believe love is what it does and so i want to say to you publicly again thank you so so very much for again all of your prayers all of your support all of everything that you do amen to make this journey lighter and for that let me tell the lord thank you let me say again thank you i pray that you've had a great week this week i pray that families again are safe and healthy and i'm asking the lord to continue to cover each and every one of you but most especially continue to be in prayer for our church family continue to be in prayer for those again that don't know who the lord is but we're living again in some last and some evil days and the only way we're going to make it it is simply by the grace of the almighty god amen and i just believe that when the church prays how many of y'all know good things will indeed happen amen this week as we're coming up we want to continue to um, study the word of god and so on tomorrow night we will have church school beginning at seven o'clock p.m so please ma'am please sir let us gather our tools and our materials and let us get on board and get online to the zoom phase so that we again may come together to study our denominational curriculum amen as relates to the word of god and then meet me back wednesday in zoom and facebook live as we continue our study in the book of genesis in the book of perseverance as we continue to do and hear what the lord has to say amen join us amen as we continue to lift up the name of Jesus the Christ. Let me say thank you to those of you who participated in blessing, amen, our young people by way of, give it to me again, and Elizabeth Shepherd Home, amen. Thank you for your support. We had over 10 monetary donations and we had over 12 persons of influence that gave out of the depths of their heart. And so I want to say to each of you, thank you. Uh, so very much and so we're able to give and give to them a lot of things and I want to say we could not be a blessing except you be a blessing first and so thank you to the Friendship Church again for the gifts that you've given amen and we are praying to God that God is going to richly use those gifts amen that we're giving to those young people at the Anne Elizabeth Shepherd home that they may be made the better in this their life because again nobody knows what the other is going through but we do know just the helping hand will go a long way amen and so again we thank God for each of you again next Sunday if you would come prepare you will wear your old-fashioned attire or your uh, however you want to wear your your uh, the shot dashikis and all that good stuff whatever you're gonna wear next Sunday that'll be the fourth Sunday in the month of February as we together will celebrate again the culmination of black history and so we want you to please ma'am and please sir let us be ready amen to receive again our black history by way of our young people our young people are working out of the depths of their hearts it's just i wish we had more but guess what god's going to use what he has today and so for that i tell the lord thank you amen do me a favor real quickly how many of y'all are happy and you know it let me try it again. How many of y'all are happy and you know it? Amen. Do me a favor. Look across the room at somebody. Wave at them. Let them know you appreciate them. You thank God for them. Amen. And you're shouting together with them as you together shall lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're getting ready now to hear from our young people by way of our Black History Spotlight and recognition. And so we pray that you would receive, amen, them as they come today as they're getting ready to give us what God has blessed them by way of the research of what black history is in our lives. Amen. Put your hands together. Give them a hand of celebration today. Come on now, y'all. Give them a hand. Give them a real hand. Amen. 
and to God be the glory. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we want to remind everyone that every year we have a theme, and this year's theme is Black Health and Wellness, and pays homage to medical scholars and healthcare providers. This is important in the time that the world is in right now in the midst of COVID-19 and other variants and diseases running rampant across the world. And we also want to recognize the ones inside the psychiatric and mental fields. Again, it is unfortunate, but we need to be aware that mental health awareness is also on the rise right now in the United States. Now we will have Kiara with the Black History Spotlight. Good morning. Good morning. This year's theme for Black History Month is Black Health and Wellness. This theme is to acknowledge black scholars and practitioners. Daniel Hale Williams was the first African American cardiologist who performed the first successful open heart surgery. Daniel graduated with an MD degree in 1833. He gave the first open heart surgery without any x rays or antibodies. His patients survived the remarkable surgery. His endeavors and work set the foundation for future. African American doctors to follow in his steps. We will now have Dylan Day with a mental health spotlight. Good morning. Good morning. Overall, mental health conditions occur in Black and African American people in America at about the same or less frequency than white Americans. However, the historic the historical black and African American experience in America has and continues to be characterized by trauma and violence more often than for their white counterparts and impacts emotional and mental health of both youth and adults. And with so much uncertainty in the world, it's easy to feel overwhelmed by fear and anxiety. But here are some ways that you can help control or at least try and get rid of. You can start by taking care of yourself. Taking care of yourself by managing your stress levels, getting enough sleep, staying active, and eating healthy. These are important actions to, to improve your overall, your overall health and maintain mental wellness. Connecting with others or reaching out to loved ones is a great way to reduce anxiety and improve your mental health. Calls, texts, and social media can help you stay connected while maintaining a responsible social distance. You can expand your reach by joining thousands of individuals and organizations across the country to support, promote, or participate in Black History Month. You can inspire others to get involved on social media. Facebook, Twitter, and other social medias are great ways to educate others and spread the word about mental health. Plus, these platforms allow your friends, colleagues, and followers to easy, easily share what you post to increase your outreach. Encourage open communication about mental health. Invite friends and family to discuss how they're affected by mental health. Hearing people talk honestly about mental illness may encourage others to seek help. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Come on, give our young people a hand of celebration one more time this morning. Amen. Thank God for them for spotlighting the history of the African American people. Amen. We call it black history. Somebody say amen. amen. It's giving time at the sanctuary, a good time to give for God loves a what? God loves a cheerful giver. I believe the more you give, the more God will indeed give unto you, for you can't be God's giving. That's no matter how you try. So we want to invite you to give, uh, be a part of the gift giving process here at the Friendship Church. If you did not give coming into the sanctuary, you can give on your way out. You should have given, got an envelope and you can put that, drop that inside the basket and those that are receiving it will be able to uh, credit it and count it and credit it to your account and that way, amen, God will be pleased, amen, with your gift giving, amen, we're praying that you would join us in the midst of giving our tithe and our offering. For again, the old church declares you can't beat God's giving. That's no matter how much you try. So today we want to try to at least 
beat is given. And so if you didn't drop it and you're not planning to drop it going out, then you can do it by way of Giblify. You can download the Giblify app, search the word Friendship Hamilton, and you can be a blessing to God. As again, God has so richly been a blessing to you. And then lastly, if you want to just drop it in the mail, you can drop it in P.O. Box 546, Hamilton, Georgia, 31811. We pray that you would do that which the Lord has required of you to do, which is to give out of your abundance. Amen. And then, not out of necessity, but we pray that you would give spiritually, amen, and willingly. To God be all of the glory. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you now for the time that is asked to share. We thank you for the gifts that we are giving. We pray now that none here would suffer because of their giving, but I'm asking today that you'll return, restore, and replenish unto them that which they have rendered unto you. It is in the name of Jesus Christ we pray, and every heart that agreed said, Amen. It's prayer time in the sanctuary, a good time to pray, for we know prayer still works. Now, I don't know who you are this morning, I don't know. Uh, where you're sitting, but we've gone through the formalities of worship. We've had the beginning of our worship and gone through the protocols and the announcements and all of that good stuff, but I need people in this building that has a real worship that won't sit quiet on God. God has been too good to us. I wish I had three of y'all in here who weren't scared, who weren't ashamed, who weren't stuck up. Let me try it again. God has been too good to us to sit quiet on him. Amen. And so I pray today that you would, again, relinquish yourself of whatever it is that is holding you captive. And I pray today that you would find it within yourself to lift up the name of our Jesus Christ. For I want to tell you, he declares, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto him. How many of y'all come today to lift up the name of Jesus? I mean, show up. Don't, don't fool me. I know it ain't a lot of us in here, but I just need a couple of y'all to help me lift up the name of Jesus Christ. As Deacon Fanny is preparing to lead us in our moment of altar prayer, I want all of us to be able to just think about Think about where we are. Think about those who are under the bridge, those who are in the hospital, those that don't have food. Let me try. How many of y'all had food to eat this morning? Yeah. Think about that person that did not have food to eat or a place to stay. Last night, when it got too cold, I just simply turned up the heat. If the heat got too hot, I just simply turned it down. Let me tell you, there's somebody somewhere that's willing to trade places with us. And I don't know who you are, I don't know where you're sitting, but I want to tell you, this is the day that the Lord has made. And how many of y'all are going to rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it? Anybody going to help me? Anybody going to help me?
Father will be that name. But we have to call you we are once again gathered in your house to call on your, your name one more time. We do want to thank you, Father, for all the things you have done for down through the years. Thank you, Father, for your living laid down last night. Didn't know all my day to come up on. I want to thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for having bread on the table to eat this morning. Oh, Heavenly Father, I just thank you for a roof over my head. Father, you didn't stop right there. You let me be able to drive out to, to the house of worship one more time. So many, Father, wish we, they had the chance that we had today. Some is in the hospital. Some is in the jailhouse. But I just want to thank you, Father. You, I didn't have a call that none of my friends or neighbors was in there. Oh, Heavenly Father, I thank you for my children right now. I thank you for my children and my children, children. Oh, Heavenly Father, be with us this morning that day. Preach man, bring the word to us. Uh, let him be able to exercise his word, dear Father, as he teach us. Uh, whoever Father, I want to thank you right now. Yeah, I've done so much for me down through the years. Oh, Heavenly Father, didn't know I won't be able to be right here as long as I am. But Father, you let me live a long time.
But how many of y'all know we ought to be willing to do anything? Because we ought to understand that whatever thing that we do for Christ, how many of y'all know it will last? Is that right? Come on, give the Lord a big God bless you. Come on, give God a big praise. Give God a big thank you, Jesus. Come on, open up your mouth, shout hallelujah. Come on, he is worthy. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the God that I serve is not dead, but early Sunday morning he got up declaring not some power, but all power in the palm of his hand. And for that we pause again this day to tell the Lord, thank you. Amen. Come on, journey with me to the book of Philippians chapter 3. I want to look today at verses 17 and 18. Preferably we can give an exhortation on this text. And preferably we can give you these three exegetical points and we'll get ready to be out of your way. Amen. Philippians chapter 3, beginning at verse 17. I want to read two verses, they being verse 17 and 18. Your copy of God's word should now be in your hand. And if you would, stand for the reading of God's word. Amen. Philippians chapter 3, those of you who are at home via Facebook Live, Philippians chapter 3. Uh, verse 17 and verse 18. When we have it, let us now register by saying amen. amen. The word of God says, Brethren, be followers together of me, uh -huh. and mark them which walk so, right. as ye have us for an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now telling you weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. With the Lord's help and with your amen, do me a favor, repeat these words after me. Say, Pastor's going to preach about when no is not an option. Come on, say it like you mean it real quickly. Say, Pastor's going to preach about when no is not an option. My brothers and sisters, in the midst of this year, 2022, the year of perseverance, I wanted to suggest to you through the writings of this text that no cannot be an option. If we're going to move from where we are to where God would have us to be, then the reality of our being in this place is that we got to learn to put our trust in God. It's evident today that we need to trust God because the reality is there's so much that's taking place in and of our lives. There's so much that's going on in and of this world, but the reality is if we are going to persevere and get to what God would have us to be, then guess what? No has to now become but not an option. In other words, my brothers and sisters, when they say we can't, we ought to say that we can. When they say the hill is too high, we ought to begin to climb it. When they say the valleys are too low, then we ought to be able to move through it. Why? Because the reality is just as God was with them, how many of y'all know God is still with us? That's why when I think about this text today with Paul, he warns against the false teachings and the false preachings and, and the enemies of Christ. It's indicative to the fact that if we are going to be who God would have us to be in the year 2022, the church that God is looking for in these last and evil days, then here is what we got to do. We got to learn to keep on and keeping on. And I'm excited this morning in the third Sunday in the month of February, the year of our my Lord 2022 to tell somebody that yeah this race is not given to the swift nor the strong but how many of know if we learn to endure and to hold out God will be right by our side that's why when he talks about the warnings against the false teachers the warnings against the enemies of Christ what Paul really does in chapter 3 it says those of us who are believers in God's word have to have a closer relationship with him. And that's why I want to suggest to you today that my relationship is not based upon who my last name represents. My relationship is not based upon the church God has blessed me to oversee and pastor. But how many of y'all know my relationship is based upon my salvation in Jesus Christ? Can I drop my key there and then ask the question is there anybody in the Friendship Church that know that you got a relationship with God? Is there anybody in the building who ain't scared, who ain't Shame, who ain't stuck up to testify today. I got a relationship with Jesus Christ. So what may befall me? I know that no is not an 
an option. But chapter 3, Paul talks now, watch this, of his spiritual life. What he does is he expresses in verses 4, 5, and 6 the main matters of his pedigree. But you got to know Paul is somebody. You got to know Paul was not a slouch in and of itself. But watch this, in verse 4, Paul says, though I might not, might also have confidence in the flesh if any other man thinketh that he has war, he has well up. He might trust in the flesh I'm more circumcised. Watch this. The eighth day, here it is, out of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, of the Hebrews of Hebrews, as touching uh, the law of, 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 of Fessari. Listen here. Concerning zeal persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law of blameless. Paul says, uh, I am somebody. Can I just suggest to you today, if you really look at verses 4, 5, and since you understand the reality that Paul had studied in some high places, he had learned some information that was great in and of himself. But Paul says, in the midst of who he is, Paul says, I count it as nothing. Can I suggest to somebody in the building today that when you come to the point when you say no, it's not an option. It doesn't matter what church you belong to, what ministry you deal with. It doesn't matter what school you are at or what job you have. Well, no, it's not an option. Watch this. These are the words that you are suggesting in and of yourself. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Is there anybody in the building glad today that God through Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit has put something on the inside of you that just won't let you hold your peace? Yeah. Paul talks about his pedigree. In verses 4 through 6, but watch this in verses 7 through 12. What Paul does is now he speaks of the gains of this life. Can I suggest to you, beloved brothers and sisters, all of us have been to the point where God has blessed us with some gains in this life. If we want to look around and survey the crowd today, we've had some great jobs. That's a gain of life. We, we've had some great homes. That's a gain of life. We've been in some great position. That's a gain of life. We, we've had a circle of influence that was beyond none. That's a gain of life. But Paul says in verses 7 through 12, he said, listen, I'm not concerned about my pedigree or the gains of this life. He says, what I will do is I will count it as a loss in Jesus Christ. Can I suggest to you today, my brother and sister, whatever you have, you didn't get it on your own, but God gave it to you. Whatever you know, you didn't teach it to yourself, but God made a way to teach it to you. And guess what? Wherever you're going, how many of y'all know if it is by the power of the grace of God, how many of y'all know God will take you? Is there anybody in the building waiting on God to take you by the hand and lead you all to glory? Is there anybody who ain't scared this morning and tell the Lord, Lord, thank you? Because again, this Sunday morning, my testimony is, you've been good to me. What did they tell me? If no, it's not an option. Watch this, I'm trying to get there. If, if no, it's not an option. And he says, the main possessions or the main purpose of my life is not my bad pedigree or my background. The main purpose of my life, here it is, is not the gains that I was able to have in this life. Then what's the main purpose of my life? Can I tell you what your purpose is? To press toward Jesus Christ. Do I have any help in here? If no, it's not going to be an option. Here it is, Sister Tally. My job is to keep on keeping on. Let me drop my kicks down there. So what if nobody goes with you? You got to go if you go by yourself. So what if nobody says amen? You got to go and say it if you say it all by yourself. So what if they won't look at you? If they won't sing with you? If they just look at you? So what? You got to sing if you sing all by yourself. Why? Because the objective of your worship is the press toward the mark. Can I ask all the questions? Is there anybody in the building going to press toward Jesus Christ? Is there anybody in the building that got a pressing spirit in your heart that says, come hell, or oh, how long I press toward the mark? How do you know it's in the text? Watch this. Verse 14 says, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in who Jesus Christ. He says, let us, y'all see it in verse 15, let us as many and be 
made perfect unto this minded. Look what he says. And if anything ye otherwise minded, God shall what? Reveal this unto you. Paul said the main objective is him pressing toward Christ. Can I suggest to you today, my brother, something we're going to say? No, it's not an option. What must we do? We got to learn to press toward Jesus Christ. If we're going to say no, it's not an option. Can I tell you what must have to happen? Jesus Christ must be the center of our joy. If no, it's not going to be an option. Can I suggest to you what I got to do? I got to find myself rooted in the word of God. Do I have any help in here? If no, it's not an option. Then guess what I got to do? I got to learn to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Is there anybody in the building that will help me preach this text and say, hey, no, it's not an option. You know it's not an option. The three things I want to give you, and I promise you, we're going to our seat. Number one, the first thing the text says, teach me, watch this, if no, it's not an option, then guess what? It starts in the mentality of the believer. Do I have any help in here? So is a man thinking. The Bible says, so is he. Do I have any help in my mouth? Boy, I used to hear them tell me the story of the little engine that could. All right. Y'all in here with me? I think I said it before. Let me say it again. Watch this. The little engine kept saying, I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. As it was climbing toward the top of the mountain and upon the cresting of that mountain, as the engine kept saying, I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. When the engine came over the mountain and headed back down to the valley, you can hear the engine say, I thought I could. I thought God. Is there anybody in here believe on his word? Is there anybody in here that know come hell or high water, the only thing that'll keep me is the word of God. How do you know it's in the mentality of the believer? Watch the text. It's in the text. Look what it says in verse 17. Look what it says. He says, what brother? He says, what? Be followers. Do y'all see that? Watch this. He says, together of me. The text says in verse 17 or on that the mentality of my worship, the mentality of my progression, the mentality of my uh, overcoming is in the mentality of the believer. Right. For he said, be followers together of me. Watch this. Guess what? He didn't say be followers of what I do, but he said be followers of who I am. Right. I wish I would help me preach it here. He didn't say be followers of who I, what I do, but he said be followers of who I am. Well, who are you then, Paul? Paul says, I am a child of the king. So I just told you in the introduction, but he said, Paul said, it ain't about how much I know. Paul says it's about who I know. I wish I had a witness in here. But Paul says, it ain't about how, how much I got, but rather Paul says, it's about who got me. Do I have any help in here? That's why he says, if I'm not going to let no be an option, Paul says, you got to be a believer, not of what I do, but be a believer of who I am. Can I ask y'all a question today? Do I have any believers that will know the fact that you're a believer of Jesus Christ? Do I have any believers today that know you're a believer of the Son of the living God? Then tell me today, what must I do to change the mentality of me being a believer? Watch this two things. Here it is. Number one, you've got to be a believer of God's Word. Can I tell you there's no error in God's Word? Let me tell you, you can change your words. I can change my word. But how many of y'all know God's word would never change? His word, watch this, is the same yesterday as it is today. And if he let me live longer, how many of y'all know it'll be that way forevermore? The believer's mentality has to be a believing, or has to be a mentality based upon the word of God. I must be right because of what he says. In verse 17, he says, watch this. He says, together of me and mark them. Uh -huh. Do y'all see that? Them which walk so as ye have us. For an example. Note the text. Now, who I am is based upon who God is. I'm a follower of him based upon the word that he gives. That's why I want to tell y'all this morning, listen to me real good. You can't eat at everybody's table. Do I have any help in here? You, you can't dine 
with everybody else. Come on, I wish I had some folk in here over 65. When you left home, your mama told you, if you didn't get it here, don't get it there. Y'all still ain't said nothing. When, when you left home, your mama said, if you hungry now, you won't be hungry then. You can't eat at everybody's table. Why? Because everybody's food don't taste the same. Tina, they won't say nothing to me. Here it is. Here it is. In the truth of the matter comes the point. Watch this. I got to be follower of him in his word. Well, how am I going to know if the word tastes the same? It's in the text. Watch this. Not only must I be followers of him based upon his word, but I got to be followers of him based upon the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Everybody that does things does not do it after the order of God. Are y'all in here with me? So look what he says. He says, even them. Do y'all see them in the text? So not only was Paul said, watch this, it's just me, but he said, it's them also. Here's what I want you to understand today. If we're going to be the church that God wants us to be in these lands and the evil days, I can't be the better of them by myself. Some them huh, that are saving me. Let thy blessing fall on me. I can't be the banner by myself. I gotta have some them in the building that say, For God, I live for God. I die. I can't wait this banner by myself. I need some them in the church. Do I have any them in the building today? Do I have any them in the building that say, I'm an example not of what I do, but I'm an example of who he is. Do I have any help in here? Who is he? He is God. In the fleshly form of his son, Jesus Christ, by the power indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Can I tell you who he is? His name is Jesus. Anybody thank God you know who Jesus is. Anybody thank God you know who he is. Anybody thank God he walks with you, he talks with you, he tells you you are his own the joy that you share the world. We'll never know. Is there anybody I just need telling y'all who ain't scared that have slipped up your horse and say, Amen. Yes. Press the way, watch this. It no not gonna be an option. Watch the text. He says it has to be a change in the mentality of the believer. I just want to pause right here and I got to go to the second point. Watch this. We wouldn't be free today if our mentalities of old never change. You would not be having the bus pass you have if the mentalities of old would never change. You wouldn't be able to go to your polls and vote your own conviction if the mentality of the old had not changed. Can I tell somebody in the building today just that their mentalities had to change then? How many of y'all know our mentality has to change now? Do I have any help in here? And what do our mentality change to? It changes to the word of God and the doctrine of Jesus Christ. That's the second point. I got to lift to you. Not only does our mentality of the believer have to change, but then secondly, we have to see the cohesiveness of those who surround you. And that word cohesiveness is the same word which means together. That word cohesiveness is the same word now that means unified. I did not say uniformed, but I said unified. Are y'all in here with me? If my mentality is going to change, then guess what? I got to change those that are around me. Let me drop my kids down there. I said each and all the time, or each and every Sunday, maybe you better take a self-examination of the folk you hang out with at home. Maybe you better take a self-examination of the folk you hang out and work with. Maybe you better take a self-examination, watch this, of the people you hang out and sit next to in the worship church on Sunday. Why? Because everybody is not after the order of God. But the text says in verse 17, if you had torn it out, look what it said. It said, brethren, be followers together of me. Watch this. Now it says, and what more of them? Do I have any help in here? Them which what walk so as ye have us. For an example, it's the them that shouts me. The them that shouts me ought to have a mark. Do I have any help in here? The text says, if you're going to look for an example, look for the ones with the mark. Y'all ain't shouting with me. It says, if you're going to have an example, look for the one that had been called out to be picked on. And guess what? Called out of darkness into the marvelous light. The text says, look for the one that you can see has the badge of Jesus Christ. And I tell you, everybody talking about heaven ain't going. I wish y'all would pray with 
in his heart. Everybody talking about the name of Jesus don't know him. But he says in the word, in the last day, there's going to be the dog that said, Lord, I've done these things in your name. But he's going to say, depart from me. Thou work of iniquity, I never knew you. Here it is. Right. He didn't start knowing and then he stopped. Yeah. He didn't start knowing and then forgot about you. You know how some of y'all be y'all in Nova Korea, they would then y'all forget about it. Thank God, God ain't like that. Watch this. He didn't start knowing and forget about you. The text says he never knew you. But I need about 15 of y'all in here who ain't scared to testify. I thank God not only I know him, but how many of y'all know he knows you? Do I have any help in here? I thank God not only do I can talk to him, but how many of y'all know he can talk to me? And I thank God at the last day, because of who I am, based upon who he is, I hear his voice say, serve and well done. It's the cohesive and watch this, those who surround you. He used the word, watch this, example. It's the English word, example. Are y'all in here with me? What example, watch this, do I see? I see them who have the example that they're willing to press. Verse 14 in the text says, then watch this, Paul says, now I press. Do y'all have any help in here? So now in verse 17, he says, mark them uh, that which also as ye have us for an example, Paul says, uh, in the cohesiveness of those that are around you, if they press it, you ought to be pressing. Do I have any help in here? If they going, you ought to be going. If they pushing, you ought to be pushing. If they pulling, you ought to be pushing. The issue in the church is, uh, when I'm pushing, you pull it. Y'all in here with me? There is no cohesiveness. And therefore, what happens is no then becomes an option. And I'm going to suggest to you, beloved, no can't be an option because we got to learn to have cohesiveness. Why do we need cohesiveness? Here it is. The first thing the text tells and the teacher is the fact that we need cohesiveness that we might look to what's ahead. We don't know what tomorrow is. But how many of y'all know we know he that holds tomorrow? Do I have any help in here? I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, but how many of y'all know I know he got tomorrow in the palm of his hand? Are y'all in here with me? The issue is looking to what is ahead. Watch this. It keeps us rooted and grounded in the ways of God. That's what I want to suggest to you. Every Sunday you ought to be in worship. Every Monday night you ought to be in church school. Every Wednesday night you ought to be in Bible study. Well, because guess what? What keeps me rooted and grounded is founded in who He is. Do I have any help in here? And watch this. Whenever I come to the point now, here it is. So the walk when I understand who He is, how many of y'all know I can come to the point where I recognize what He's able to do? I just need a talk right here. And I hit my notes. Watch this. Anybody know He's still making ways out of no ways? Anybody thank God he's still turning midnights into middays? Anybody thank God he's still healing sick folk that are on their deathbed? He's still raising dead folk from a 40 long night. Can I tell you, he's still making miracles. I hear y'all saying today he ain't making miracles that I can see. Let me suggest to you, you still here in the midst of the pandemic. Y'all don't know when the shop here it is. That's a miracle. You ain't lost your home in the midst of the pandemic. That's a miracle. Are y'all live here with me? You still can move and have your way and your being in the midst of a pandemic that's killed so many folks. Can I tell you, that's a miracle from God. You got to learn to look at what is ahead. Why, Pastor David, what's ahead? Because the text says in verse 14 to press. Why press? Because here it is in verse 16 it says for me to walk of whom, watch this, I have told you often and now tell you crying. All right. The text says weeping. Why? Why is he weeping? The text says that they now are what? The enemies of the cross of Christ. The cohesiveness was this. Help me to look at what's ahead. But then secondly, it helps me to stay grounded in the word of God. Are y'all tracking with me in here? Because if my mentality never changes, then I can't identify people that have already changed. Can I tell you, you better learn to look and take a retrospective look of those who are around you. Those that have the mark, those who have been identified, those that have the badge of Jesus Christ, those that have the badge of Emmanuel, those that know him in the free part of their sin because, watch this, if the mentality is right, the cohesiveness is 
right? Can I tell you what will happen? How many of y'all know God will take care of you? Yeah. Say, ain't nobody on my right, no, he'll take care of you. Yeah. Say, ain't nobody on my left, thank God, he not only will take care of you, but how many of y'all know he has taken care of me, and he will take care of me. Why? Because I'm looking to what is All right. ahead. If no one had an option, the mentality of the believer must change. Yes, yeah. Then guess what? If no one had an option, yes. the cohesiveness of those who surround you got to change. Right. In other words, I got to find those around me who believe what I believe. Yeah. I got to find those around me who think like I think. I got to find those around me who oppress like I press. I got to even find those around me that are worship as I worship. The cohesiveness of those who are around you will not allow that to spill from you. Because if no becomes an option, thirdly, let me tell you what will happen. Thirdly, you'll have the fatality of life. It's in the same text, verse 18. In verse 17, look what it says. It says in verse 18, there it is again, here it is. And now tell you even weep. Look what he says. That they are the what enemies of the cross of Christ. Now if you know verse 17, if you know verse 16, here it is. In verse 16, he talks about those that are believers. In verse 17, he talks about those who are unbelievers. Here it is, the fatality of nine steps in the plan, or it starts in the mind of the believers to the fact, where are you in the Lord Jesus Christ? And the fatality of the believer, watch this, it becomes the fatality of night because now I'm an enemy of the cross. Well, what about the cross that makes you an enemy? I don't believe in the sufferings and the sanctifications of the cross. I don't believe in the fact that the cross was used as a symbol of death to those that will believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I don't believe in the fact that the cross, it made its way through the streets of Jerusalem to identify that Jesus Christ was Lord. If I cannot understand these that are before me, then then it makes me an enemy of the cross. That's why I don't worship, because I'm the enemy of the cross. That's why I won't believe, because I am an enemy of the cross. That's why I won't testify, because I am an enemy of the cross. But somebody in the building today needs to know without a shadow of a doubt the fatality to the life of those who are unbelievers is a permanent fatality. In other words, you can't undo what has been done if you're an unbeliever or an enemy of the cross. Then guess what? In hell, you shall lift up your eyes. If I want to tell you, this is not nothing that is a figment of our imagination. No, this is not nothing we can see on the Cartoon Network or even ESPN. But the fatality of life suggests that it is a permanent situation. In other words, after death is indeed the judgment. And the reality is, if no has now become an option in your life, then I just told you, yes, in hell, you're going to lift up your eyes. But not only is the fatality of life permanent, but because I have been come in enemy of the cross, the fatality of life now is final. Here's what I want you to understand, the difference between permanent and final. Permanent means today that yes, it can be overturned. Permanent means that yes, I can go back through and now I can give pardon for that which was permanent. But final means that there is nothing else that can be done. Final means that now the book has been closed and now there's nothing that can come into now your existence. 
the reason why I believe that yes, it is final because God says, uh, yes, when I come, uh, that every knee shall behold me. For they said that when I come, uh, every tongue shall confess. Have we got to hear people because when I come, uh, you're going to testify that I am God and God all by myself. Have we got to help you in the reason why I stopped to tell you this morning that yes, a no cannot be an option. It because there are those that are trying to plot your downfall. Have we got to help you in here? No, I cannot be an option because there are those that are trying to put something blocks in your way. Have we got to help you here? But if you have a change mentality. I said, if you have cohesiveness of those that are around you, then can I tell somebody, yes, you won't be considered an enemy of the cross. Have I got any help in him? I'm going to my seat now, and I can't leave y'all without telling you that, yes, there is a warning against a false teachers in Jesus. There is a warning against of those that profess that Jesus is their Savior. Have I got any help in him? No matter what's around you. Can I tell somebody? You got to have a verse 14, a spirit in your heart. Have I got any help here? The Paul says that I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. Have I got any help here? I press in the midst of downfall. I press in the midst of destruction. I press in the midst of my disaster. Have I got any help in the hand? My pressing is because I got a prize that's waiting on me. My prize is the one that sits high and look down low. My prize is the one that rocks me to sleep in the midnight of the hour. In the one that lets me know everything. I wish I had a witness in him. Everything, it'll be all right. And I got to help him. But if you now are going to learn to press, and you know it's not going to be an option, then you got to understand the reason why a Paul pressed is because he counted of not his self that be apprehended. But he says in verse 13, but this one thing I do understand. I'm beginning of those things that are behind me. I'm pressing on up the road for that which is in front of me. Have I got any help here? Thank you, friendship, for letting me stop my I thank y'all for letting me have a few scattered remarks. But I stop by to tell you that yes, it was all press down in the year 2020, 2022. We got the press of knowing God got our back. Anybody claim that you serve a God that got your back? Anybody claim you serve a God that can hold your hand? Anybody claim you serve a God that can help you to cover everything? I wish I had a witness here. Everything, it'll be all right. Have I got any help here? Even on Monday, I press a Tuesday and Wednesday. I press a Thursday and Friday. I press even on Saturday. Because when I press, I can come to the Lord's house on Sunday morning. And I don't have to sit cute and sophisticated. But when I come, I can press toward the mark of the call of Jesus. And if I lift up the name of Him, anybody claim? You come to lift up his name. Anybody claim you come to tell God thank you. Anybody claim you come to shout hallelujah. Anybody in here got something to shout about? Anybody in here got something to say thank you for? He will have I got any help in him? He will a true big praise from the rising of the sun to the going down. The same, he do everything a true big praise. And I tell y'all my reason to keep on pressing. I press the home of 
month of January. Come on, got me to help it in with 20 days in the February. I friends for the month of February. Come on, got me to help it in. There ain't days left if the Lord say the same. I press the remaining eight days of this work. Come on, got me to help it in. The reason why I got to keep on pressing is because of Jesus press for me. Can I tell you how I know? He pressed the name of his father. Can I tell you what he said? Father, if you prepare me a body, I go down with the man of his sin. He pressed when he was in the wilderness. Have I got to help him? The Bible says he was there for 40 days and for 40 nights. He pressed when he came out of the wilderness. He in the midst of Pilate's courtroom, he pressed on that Friday. They whipped him on that Friday. I'm going to y'all. I'll thank y'all one more time. They whipped him on that Friday. They whipped him with 40 strikes. They won. He pressed because he didn't say a mumbling word. They whipped him from judgment hall to judgment hall. They whipped him. As they march him from Germany Hall to Germany Hall. I thank God that he pressed. They whipped him to the point that his flesh tore from his body. They whipped him to the same point that he fell on his knees. But I thank God that he pressed because the same Jesus that fell to his knees. They raised him above the earth. They hung him high. I thank God that I got the pressure. I press because he didn't say a word. He healed the sick and he raided him. He gave sight to the blind and he fed 5,000. But here he is praying between two thieves. I press because I heard him say, Father, into thy hand I commit my spirit. I because he died, he died, and everybody glad he died. Hey, hey, he died, and everybody know he died. Hey, hey, he died. To the soldier said, surely this must be the son of God. He died. To the sun refused to shine. He died. To the dead man came out the grave and walked around the streets of the room. He died. To heaven was satisfied. But thank God he kept on pressing. They took him off that cross. They laid him in a Bible tomb. He pressed his way on that Friday. He pressed his way all day Saturday. Thank God in press. I heard him say, all power is in my hand. Anybody in here, I thank God you know him. Anybody in here, I thank God he knows you. Anybody in here, got something to shout about. Anybody in here, got something to say amen for. Anybody in here, I know he worthy. He worthy. I wish I had a witness. He One of these mornings, I don't know when. One of these mornings, I don't know where. I may be riding in my car. I may be sitting on my couch. I may be teaching somebody student. But when he comes, have I got any help in here? I want to hear the Lord say, say. I got help in here. Say a oh, well done. You fought a good fight and you finished your course. End it now until that master joy. Can you do me one last favor and I'll give you the benediction. Can you holler back at me? Say yeah. Can y'all say yeah? Say yeah. Can y'all say yeah? yeah. Lost 
in the mentality of the believer. Yes, no can be an option because you got to make sure you're surrounded by some folk yes. that have the same spirit as you. Yes. Do I have the witness in here? Because if not, that means you become the enemy of the cross. Yes. I wish I had a witness in here. And an enemy of the cross is something fatal. Because you do know he is coming back, don't you? Y'all do know he is coming back. And he's not coming for enemies of the cross. He's coming for those that have loved him and have kept his commandment. Whatever you do, wherever you go, keep pressing forward, keep going on, keep moving up the King's Highway. Keep going, keep going. They want to try to stop you, but you keep going, keep it going. Do I have a witness in here? Yes, sir. Because when they try to stop you, how many of y'all know God will start you? I wish I had three of y'all in here who ain't scared to testify. Hey, every time I gave up, he kept on pushing me forward. You keep pressing. You keep pressing. They may say no. But how many of y'all know one yes from God? I said one yes from God. Anybody know that make all of the difference? As we're standing to our feet, the invitation is extended, and the door to God's house is now open. If you're here today, will you come? Come on, every head is bowed, every eye closed. You can come by letter or Christian experience, or you can come as a candidate for water baptism. If you're here when you come, don't put off today for tomorrow. Tomorrow is my promise. For the Bible says, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. If you're here today, will you come? Will you come? If you're in Facebook land, Facebook live, if you're watching this in the replay, and you want to be a part of this, movement of baptized believers in Christ, the Friendship Church, send us an email at fbch1869, fbch1869 at gmail.com. For no longer are we confined to the four walls of this building, no longer are we confined to the area in which demographics lie, but whosoever will, the true essence of the call. Will you come? 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 Sweet communion of this Holy Spirit be in rest, rule, and abide with these thy people hence now and forevermore. And we all said, Amen.
Thank you.